welcome back to my channel so today's video is about how you can rent rooms out okay so many people like myself <laughs> i rent the entire space out but there are some people who are making very good money renting out rooms so if you have a larger property that you would like to use as a midterm rental you can definitely set it up and rent it out per room or you can divide that property up into separate spaces and make it into different units. So let's talk about how we can do that, all right? Okay, now, if we have an entire house that we want to rent out per room, we can use both models actually because there may be some people who need a larger house. So you can rent the entire house out to them for your price, your set price, or you can rent the rooms out if you just have people who want to pay a lesser rate and don't mind sharing spaces. So people who usually like to rent rooms are people who are budget conscious, right? They want to pay the lesser price. They just want a place to lay their head, a clean, quiet place, lay their head down so they can get some rest, have a place to, you know, take a shower and they can get out of there and go back to work. So that's all they are looking for. Now, depending on how your house is set up, some things that you do need to think about, all right? You do need to think about those common spaces. So the common spaces like if there's a shared bathroom, if there, well, a shared kitchen, of course, because most places only have one kitchen, but sometimes you have more than one kitchen depending on the property. But the shared space like the kitchen, the living room, like those common shared spaces, how do you maintain that? So you would have to basically have someone or your cleaners come in at every so often, maybe once a week, to clean those common spaces. I want the toilet looking like one of those chairs from the Men in Black headquarters. Or you're going to have to come up with some type of schedule for your guests so that people are responsible for cleaning certain spaces. Now, that can get a little bit tricky because everybody cleans differently. Everybody has different work schedules. Um, and everybody does not have the same, uh, how should I say it, passion for cleaning, right? I agree. <laughs> Some people just don't like cleaning. So I would, and just as, this is just me, so I would just go ahead and have a cleaner come in and clean those common spaces at least one once a week and pass that cost off to the guest, okay? So that would be a part of what you build them. Now, you could do that in different ways. You can uh charge a rate that's a little bit higher so that you can cover those cleaning costs or you could charge a separate fee for weekly cleanings and kind of divide it up amongst the people who are living in the house so however you want to do that but that is something you would need to think about right all right so another thing you need to think about is securing those rooms so these people probably don't know each other right so you want to make sure that their bedrooms are secure make sure you put some type of lock on the doors um, now to make it easy i would get some type of an electronic lock so you can change codes and you're not constantly running over to a property giving someone a key or anything like that uh, but in those situations where you do need to have an actual key um, you know you might have to go a cheaper route just at the beginning until you make some more money you can always just go get lock boxes, okay? And put lock boxes on the door handles of the doors and give the person the combination for the lock box, okay? So that is a cheaper way to do it. Otherwise, get an electronic lock where you can change the codes and kind of set codes remotely so that after each guest leaves, then you can set a new code for that particular room and they can get in, okay? So keep that in mind, making sure you secure each room, all right? The other thing you need to think about is disputes. So how are you going to handle people who don't get along? <laughs> Even though we are talking about adults, you still have to manage adults, unfortunately. So how are you gonna handle people who do not get along? And you know, uh, there's an issue that arises. So you might need to have some rules in place, and I'm sure you do, because that would be, I would think the best uh, thing to do is just have certain rules in place so that you can eliminate as much as possible any disputes that may occur, all right? 
Now, one more thing that you need to think about would be the logistics of leasing these these rooms, right? So each person would have to have their own lease to rent the room. So it can get a little bit tricky. Uh, you would have to be very, very organized, especially if you have people coming in and out at different times uh, of the month or however it may work. You're going to have to be able to keep track of who's in at what time and making sure their lease is in place or their agreement is in place so that someone doesn't stay longer than they're supposed to stay. And, you know, we don't have any issues with that as well. OK, so you do have to be very organized. Make sure you have some type of system to track who's coming in and out on these dates and that you have your agreements and leases in place. So those are just a few tips for you guys who would like to rent per room. Now, um, of course, if you have a house, normally, you know, you have someone who does landscaping or snow removal or anything like that. But you might want to also think about parking. If you have a garage and let's just say you have four people living in a property, but it's only a two car garage, then who gets to park in the garage? The, are you going to charge them extra, which I would, if you parked in a garage, that's an extra fee um, versus parking in the driveway or parking on the street, like the logistics of that parking, because even if someone's parked in a garage, if someone's parked in the driveway, then they're blocked in, right? So you got to make sure you work out those fine little details. I know it sounds like small, but those can be major things. If someone has to get out and get to work and someone else has them blocked in, and they can't get out or they have to go back in and try to wake somebody up to move their car and that could be a whole dispute in itself right so keep those little things in mind now at the beginning of this video i did talk about how you can split your house up so if your house is um set up in a way or maybe not but if you're able to divide the house up into separate spaces that could also work so let's just say you have um let's just say a four bedroom two and a half bathroom house right if you're able to split that up so that you can have a, a two bedroom with one bathroom and then another two bedroom with another bathroom that could work um, also if you're able to put in a, a separate kitchenette or a little small kitchen in a washer dryer area that could work as well now with it, when it comes to the washer and dryer that might be a situation where they can share uh, the washer and dryer because it is one house uh, so you might be able to get away with that. But if not, they have those small little washer dryer combos that you can get nowadays that you can easily get installed. Right. As long as you can hook it up to some type of plumbing, it usually works out. So if you have the capability of splitting your house up, you can make more money that way as well. All right. Hopefully this helps you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe continue to get information from me about midterm rentals and how i am running my business and also giving you advice of how you can run your midterm rental business as well now if you're new to this and you need to learn how to get into midterm rentals check out the description my self-study course is below and i often put some free resources down there for you all right i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and bye